In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of pales and rails. Pales and rails stands for progressive and regressive angular isometric loading. That's a mouthful. You don't need to remember it. What you do need to know is this is the most effective way to increase range of motion in a muscle and protect your body in compromised positions, okay? So if you want your hamstrings to be more flexible, if you want your hips to be more flexible, if you want your shoulders to be more flexible, pails and rails are gonna be more bang for your buck than anything else you can do. It's a real simple uh, tool set too. All it is is you're gonna stretch passively for two minutes. Why two minutes? Because two minutes, all the literature says, that you have to at least stretch for two minutes to gain lasting range of motion. Meaning if I stretch for 30 seconds, I'm not doing a thing. I've got to stretch for two minutes to make sure that that stretch is going to make me more flexible long term. So we're going to stretch for two minutes. We're going to get you in the longest position you can get to in a muscle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to teach the muscle, teach the tissue to fire in that new range of motion we just got. So let's say we do that two minute stretch, you gain four to six inches of range of motion. Well, now we're going to teach the muscle to fire there. That does a couple of things for us. Number one, it allows your body to actually gain even more range of motion. You're going to immediately feel another four to six inches of extra range of motion that you get gain if you're doing something like a hamstring. But the real bang for your buck here is now your muscle is used to firing in a compromised position, something that's never had to use before. And if you use your muscle in this new position, well now it can protect itself in this new position. It can be strong in this new position. So if we're running on the football field and we're extending our hamstring maybe a little bit further than we ever had before because you know what, we want that touchdown real bad. Well, now my muscle's used to firing there, I'm less likely to pull a hamstring. That goes for every single joint in your body. So let's go over what this looks like really, really quick. I'm gonna go over a hamstring pale and rail. I'm not gonna do it for the full two minutes, but I just want you to understand what this looks like and what the tempo is for the different pieces of a pail and a rail. We're gonna do both pails and rails within the same exercise too, just so you know. So first we're gonna set up and we're gonna stretch the hamstring out to its length and position. So what I wanna do is I wanna have a little bit of a bend in my knee right here. Why are we doing that? If I'm totally locked out, I'm gonna stretch all this tendon behind the knee. I'm not gonna get up into the belly of the hamstring. Well, the belly of the hamstring is where I wanna be. So I'm gonna get a little bit of a bend right here. Then I'm gonna keep my chest big, nice flat back. I'm gonna start hinging forward and feeling this hamstring stretch. While I'm doing that, I'm taking these hips and I'm tilting the hips back at the same time until I get to a position where I feel that hamstring stretching as far as it can go. And it's really important. I want to feel the stretch in the muscle that I'm trying to stretch. That may sound simple, but if you're not feeling the stretch in the hamstring, you're not stretching the hamstring, okay? So right now I'm really feeling the stretch up at the top of the hamstring into the glute. That's what I wanna work on with this drill. Now I'm gonna get my chest big. I'm gonna set my timer on my watch. I'm gonna hold this for two minutes. And as that two minutes goes by, I'm gonna slowly stretch a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I'll gain some range of motion just by the passive stretch for two minutes. This should not be incredibly intense. It should be uncomfortable, okay? It's not gonna be super comfortable, but I'm not having to build up a sweat yet. Now, once I've hit that two minute mark on my watch or my time or whatever, I know that I've gained as much range of motion passively, meaning just by stretching as I can. Now's where I start making my money. First, we're gonna do a pail, okay? So a pail stands for progressive angular isometric loading. So we're gonna take my foot, I'm gonna be in this position. Remember, I'm as long as I can get. I can't go any more forward. I can't change anything else. This hamstring is at length. And what I'm gonna do is from this position, I'm going to isometrically push, which isometric just means that I'm pushing as hard as I can, but there is no movement into the bench. I like to coach up on this one, try to push the bench down and pull it to you. And so I'm gonna use all my mental energy. I'm gonna start at about 10% and start pulling against it. Then I'm gonna ramp that up after about 10 to 15 seconds up to 30%. Then I'm gonna ramp it up to 50%. Now at 50%, I should be feeling a pretty good pull on that hamstring. I might even start be shaking a little bit, but I wanna intensify this isometric loading even more. So how do I do that? I'm gonna find something external like this dowel rod or I'm gonna clench a fist. And I'm gonna lock down every muscle in my body and I'm gonna ramp this thing up to 70%. If you can talk at 70%, you're not pushing hard enough. I'm pushing very, very hard. My muscles should be shaking, my knees are shaking. I am fully intentional with what I'm doing. 
Then after about 10 to 15 seconds of 70, I'm gonna go max effort for 10 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now you should still be in the position that we stretched maximally too earlier. So I should be in the maximum stretch I could have done. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gain that last two to three inches. How I'm gonna do that, I'm not gonna move the leg, but I'm going to use my quad and pull my chest into the stretch anymore. So you can see already, I've, I'm not even really doing one. I've gained about four or five inches of range of motion here. I'm gonna do the same intensity level and pull in the opposite direction now. So now I'm trying to pull into the stretch more. And I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna go 10%, 30%, 50%, 70%, and then give me, myself 10 seconds of max effort pulling myself towards my toe. And what you'll find is, you've automatically gained maybe two inches, maybe four inches, maybe six inches of extra range of motion. You're gonna be sweating if you're doing it right. You're gonna be shaking. You're gonna need some recovery time after you do it, but you'll instantly expand that range of motion and you'll strengthen the muscle in a new position. Now, when you first start doing these, you don't need to do a whole lot of sets. Honestly, one per day is probably plenty. I wouldn't do it before we're doing a big workout at this intensity because you're gonna be kind of smoked. But as you go, what you can do is you can start getting that position. You can do a pail, then a rail, rest and stretch for about 30 seconds. And then you can do another pail and then another rail. And you can start stacking up two to three sets of this and you'll get really, really good results really, really fast. Now, I did, I'm not gonna go over all our pails and rails today. We don't have enough video on this one. But what I'm going to do is our big money pails and rails our hamstrings, our glutes, our internal external rotation of the shoulders, that kind of stuff. We're going to have a separate video up for each of those. So if I or another coach tells you, hey, I need you to go do your hamstring pails and rails, well, you can go click on the hamstring video and find the pails and rails coaching for the hamstring or for internal external rotation or for the glute or for the quad, the hip flexor, whatever it may be.